Howdy, y'all. So we got a lot of cleaning up to do on the D4, and we got a few things we're going to take apart today. Dad's been working diligently on a lot of cleaning behind the scenes and polishing up some of the mating surfaces and surfaces on the clutches on the back. We're going to clean this rear end out here today, get all that rust and gunk and debris out of here. We're going to pull the drawbar off. I'm going to get it over on the welding bench where we can work on it. Today in the mail, I wanted to share a book that came uh, from the Antique Caterpillar Machinery Club. Uh, and basically, it's a serial number rundown for all of the Caterpillar crawler tractors from 1925 to 1960. And I was looking up our D44 4G here. And you can see we are right at the very end of the D4, the very first D4 production run, which is 9986, which is the one we have. And it looks like they stopped at 9999. And this is a narrow gauge, the 44 inch narrow gauge. And the tractor was built in Peoria, but this does confirm that it's a 1939. And over here, 7U is definitely a 1952 and definitely the wire 60 inch gauge. So among other things, Dad got these cleaned up, these mating surfaces cleaned up, he got some of the rust off. I think they're going to work just fine. Still got to do these. And over here, we're still sorting out our thread issue on the other side. This tap is a UNF thread. I don't know if you can see that on there. It's a inch and a half, 12 UNF. It doesn't want to quite thread on there. I've got a, another one coming that isn't the UNF, which is, I think, Universal National Fine Thread, something like that. Um, but that is just not working right. Now, I did get some aftermarket nuts. They screwed right on there. I think their tolerances might not be as good. So this side still needs to be addressed. I did get some new bearings coming on the way. Dad cleaned these up, and um, they are not passing the fingernail test. There's a lot of pitting on those bearings. And while we're not going to run this tractor every day, 40 hours a week, uh, this is one of those things that I would put it back together, and it would keep me up at night. So rather than lose sleep over it, I got new bearings, so we'll be cutting these off and replacing those when they come. But we're not doing anything until they get here, and we are absolutely sure that they will fit and work. We'll measure them and check them out. We're also able to get all these clutch components cleaned up over here. That bushing in there looks just fine, just great. Uh, you can see the grooves in there for the oil. Uh, it's got some wear. It's kind of loose, but nothing too concerning. I think we're going to just put it together and run it. Dad's trying to take apart the farmer rig on the drawbar so that we can get this thing off of here. It's definitely farmer. <laughs> Why, now, how would we know what farmer rigs look like? We are! Probably something like that. I absolutely love how on the farm everything's a drop in. There were bent valves in the toolbox on this machine that you could tell at one point or another we're stuck in that drop in. I'm going to have to torch that one out. Now that we have that off, you can really see just how far gone this is, but I think this is definitely repairable. And today in the mail, uh, with the book that I got, we have the shim that's going to ride underneath it here and protect it in the future. Now that we've got those bolts out of here, you can really see just how much wear is in the middle of this drawbar. So, yeah. Got some rebuilding to do there, but this is substantially thinner right here in the middle. Good news is, as Dad was pointing out, these aren't egged out too terrible. And I'm going to crawl underneath there. There's a pin I can pull out, and then I can pull this draw bar out of here. And I'll take this off and get it over on the welding bench. Here's the drawbar pin. How in the heck does that come out? 
and the pivot shafts. I'm sure have some wear. Those are going to be difficult to get to. And I'm not sure if I need to drop this whole thing down. How that's work. I'm going to go look at the parts book. According to the book, to get that drawbar out of there, I need to pull these bolts off of here. And then that pin presses out of the drawbar, the main pin that it swings on. And then I'll remove that. They call the shoe which I do not have in there. And then I can pull the whole drawbar out. There's a bit of a better view of what I gotta do. I gotta pull those nuts off so I can release that retainer for the drawbar and the main pin. Dad's over here on this part washer. Cleaning more parts. What are we working on now? Clutch uh, brake. Bearing, rear, bearing caps bearing for the rear end, end, the clutch parts. Got this one done. There's a couple up on the bench he's got cleaned up. This is 99% of the work at this point. But he's got these all cleaned up. He's got a marked little hole right there where they were set. But if we're getting new bearings, we're going to have to reset all them anyway. I gave up on the draw bar for now because my blocks are in the way down there. And I don't really need to get to it. I got it swung out of the way where I can get to the drain hole and clean this back of this tractor. I'm going to work on this compartment. I got to get into there, uh, pull that out so I can put the new bearing in there and the new seal. So I'm going to start on this. With the use of my 6F3703 wrench, I've got that plug loosened up and I'm going to dump this oil out of the rear end of this tractor. It's a long-winded one. I got another pan ready. Don't think I'm gonna need it. Oh, that ain't good. What? Well, what's the matter? It's plugged up. Oh, well, unplug it. Yeah. You need a wire? No, I got a screwdriver here. That doesn't surprise me. No, it looks like it's got some leaves and... I don't know. Oh! That's some thick oil. There ain't any metal. Look for metal. No, I'm not seeing any metal. There's nothing That's really good. on the plug. It's just... It's just dirty. Yeah. Probably this stuff's been in here since 1939. The way it looks. It's at the bottom, so it wasn't up into anything. Yeah, there we go. Get that draining. It's cold out here today. You can see my breath. So it's probably, what, 35, 40 in here today? <laughs> this stuff looks like maple syrup. Well, it's, it's heavy oil anyway. It is, but... Yeah, that's pretty, pretty ugly. Yuck. Well, I'll let that drain out here. I think that pan will be more than substantial to hold it. We didn't see any real metal when we took things and opened it up anyway. So I'll let that drain for a little bit and I'll continue cleaning where I was up front. Here's a look from up top, and there's a little bit of surface rust on that pinion, but nothing I think that's going to bother anything. No, no pitting. And that's the oil that came out of the rear end and the transmission. Still draining a little bit right there. It's going to be for some time. I finally got this loose. Um, being that this tractor is lefty, 
that plug put up one heck of a fight, and we had to put a big extension on our tool. We actually bent the handle of the tool a little bit. You can kind of see how it's curved. But I finally got it loose. Uh, up inside, there's a substantial amount of water, and it is frozen with ice, so just just to tell you how cold it is out here. This, this tool was one of the first things I bought when I started this project. I'm certain, certainly glad I did. Yeah, 4G's taking a leak. Lefty. <laughs> yeah, this he's been holding it for 80 years. <laughs> All right, let me pull the other side off. That's mostly water. Yeah, both of them are. Yeah, Lefty had to go. Ah, that is not the right copper ring for those, I don't think. They definitely sealed. The threads don't look damaged. I'm not sure why this one came out so hard. What Dad's saying is this copper ring being the wrong size here. The water got down in there next to it, and it made a rust ring around the bottom of the plug. And that is why those went out so difficult. So he's over on the bench with a file cleaning up those threads. But that's got quite a bit of rust off of there. Where it was in between that copper O-ring and the threads. And that is why we fought that so bad. I went in for to help my wife with the new garbage disposal under our sink. Sounds like Dad's practicing piano. As luck would have it, the mailman just stopped by and dropped off some bearings that I ordered for the main carrier bearings. And these are Timkins. I do believe the original bearings are Timkins as well. And this cone is referred to as a 555S. The cup is referred to as a 552A. And as a group, you can buy these. And they are Timkin Set 424. Before we even get to the point where we're ready to put these on, we want to put a micrometer on them and put a micrometer on the ones that are on the, uh, the shaft and make sure that these are absolutely correct before we cut anything off. And there's an after. Now I got a little bit more work to do. I've been cleaning this up, spraying it down with solvent, diesel, but looking a lot better. Still working on this compartment. A lot of you might have seen the short video that I filmed where I was dumping water and rest assured, I was just dumping it in this side over here, which was already full of water right up to the, where that axle uh, housing is for the final drive. And kind of trying to flush this out. And then what I do is spray it down with a little bit of diesel so that it will help kind of get some of that gunk to move and get it down. I got some pans under there to collect it, but still a lot of work to do inside of here. It's a mess. And the funny thing to note, when I came out to work on cleaning this up this morning, uh, is where you can see those little water bubbles on top of that axle housing, um, or where the pivot shaft goes, I'm sorry. Um, there was ice, there was just water in here, and it was ice. And I reached down in there and poked through the ice, and for a brief second I thought I'd actually poked my finger through some rusty cast iron, but... A little scare and finally got the plugs off they were super rusty but we're going to be getting this cleaned up here and hopefully getting those clutch packs put right back in here so mr. clean's been over here and he's really polishing these things up nice they not, don't not a lot of either. not a lot of wear but looking good 
So we're going to measure these bearings right now and make sure they're the correct ones for this carrier. I'm going to call it 2.189. that fit in there? Yeah, there's a little bit of room. I wonder if that axle up there is a little thicker. That's 2.240. We gave ourselves a little bit of a scare unnecessarily and thought we bought the wrong bearings, but this has a really small step up here and it was hidden under that oil baffle this should go right across there real nice it's pretty well, close be snug it's exactly two and a quarter inches yeah we're gonna be good those are the right berries this is wishful thinking act two Yeah, it's in all the way. All right, go ahead, tighten it. Get some pressure on it. Maybe we'll heat it. It's got it's got a quarter inch to go to get off of that lip. This polar was a five dollar yard sale find, and it was rusty, but. All right, search so where you going. going. Well, I'm pulling this towards me, so it's going to want to spin clockwise. Okay, I need to go like this. There, there you go. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, we got pressure on it. Let's put a little heat on that. So if you haven't already noticed the theme to everything we do around here, it involves a cutting cord. Oh, it ain't moving. Well, maybe when it cools, it'll pop. I can put more heat on it. <laughs> Got her. Takes heat, baby. Got it. Don't touch that stuff. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. Hot bearing. Hot bearing. Coming at you. You put it out in the snow, it would melt all the way through that six-foot snow pile. I thought it <laughs> When it cools, I'm going to measure it. I think there's 10,000 interference on these. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to set it in the fire. What did we learn from these bearings? Well, this new bearing and the old one, which I just measured, measure about 240, 242. They're 2.24 inches. The axle measures 2.260. So we've got about 18 to 20 thousandths interference. So, so it presses on tight to that 260 axle. All right, show everybody what that looks like on the calendar. Twenty thousandths of an inch is not very much, but in this case, it's quite a bit. If you can see the gap between the calipers, that's twenty thousandths. Which may not look like much, but when you're dealing with finely machined stuff and tolerances, that's quite a bit that that bearing has to expand to be able to get onto that axle. <laughs> Ah, no! We couldn't get the arms under it concentrically, so... But this got us to where we need to, now we can get them in. I got this one. Watch the fingers. 
Is it going? It takes a lot of heat. Yes, it did. There it is. That might pry out now. It's burned through. Well, our shield here did not really work, so cool. Maybe it'll pop out of there. We're burned through that and good. I could go on the other side. It's loose. Yeah, you're a precision cutting torch mechanic. Yeah, right. <laughs> there, there it goes. You've got to get the right. Yeah, that's there you go. What a fall. That was a good relief cut. There it goes. Need a hammer over here. Go with the top. No, come up on the top. There you go. Of course, it's going to land next to a tire. All right. Oh, I don't think we heard anything in there. I'll uh, crew that up with some paper. And Emery. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know you where I should have cut on the other one? In this space here. Yes. That's probably what that's in there for. Yeah, I made a mistake. I should have. Well, on the other one, we'll have to wash that, and we'll cut in this hole here. We won't damage anything underneath. Yep. Now we know. But this won't hurt anything. No, we did get into that little stop back there a little bit, too. Well, at least now we're very confident we got the right bearings, because this is a Timken 555S. That camera will focus on it. Uh, made in the USA, so exactly the same as the ones that I bought. Um, that part number cross-references, the original CAT part number is a 2B9049, and they use this bearing, every company almost has used this, even Ford Motor Company has a cross-reference for this bearing, General Motors, International, John Deere, and there's the race that we just cut out. So we won't damage nothing. Okay. Yep. I wish that this was a little bit, there was a little bit more room we could get something in there to protect that with. Is that going to be in your way? Yeah. You try that. Didn't go quite as far on this one, I think. I can't see. Oh, we welded this. Did it? Yes. That might be a problem. It'll come out with the race. I'm going to take it over. That's sh you know what? We can pound on that. Yeah. From the other side. Yeah, we can't hey, flip it over. See? I got it. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> you know what? I'm still not quite through. It did protect things. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's moving. It's going. Is it? Yeah. That ain't going to work. Uh-uh. It is. Look at it. Here. 
Mr. Ghost. That ain't gonna work. You ain't cut through, that's why. I, I know. Now she's moving. There it is. This one's unscathed. Yeah. That thing actually did protect it. Well, me. and I did it in this hole. Yeah. Dad is cleaning up some parts, and we've been discussing an option to basically sling this tractor with these big heavy straps and put a piece of angle iron across the top of there, resting on top of the tracks, and then another sling underneath where this drawbar is. Pick this up with the backhoe and take it outside and pressure wash it because we've kind of decided we're going to do the paint job. Well, when I say we, I mean me and my mom and my wife and my grandfather and everybody except poor old dad. He likes the patina. And he's not wrong. The patina on that tank and on the seat, uh, everything is beautiful, but... We've got two patina tractors already, so right now I'm going to take these track guards off. Actually, not the track guards, the upper guards over the tensioner. That's the beauty of this tractor is uh, it does have all these guards. They're all complete, and they're really not bent up as bad as you would expect. But this wasn't a dozer, so that helps. First look. More flaxseed, Dad. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff we want to get out of here before we paint it and spray it with air because it'll just blow dust into the paint. If this needs any undercarriage work, that's going to be a job for later. That's not good. Yeah, that's really not good. Ah, I broke a bolt off. Yeah, it looks like fun. Yeah, we need to get this out there and get it blowed off. Show me what you were just talking about, Dad. Right there, it looks like a torch cut. Right there, where maybe somebody tried to... Uh, cut a bearing off from earlier. I know that wasn't us because we... We didn't torch it. <clears throat> no, we uh, just heated it and pulled it with the puller. Well, another reason those bearings look like replacement bearings, not original. Just finished getting the bolts out of these guards. I don't think there's anything else holding me. Unless there's something I didn't see. Not all those out. And I didn't break any. No. Just went tough. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Something holding me. Oh. Oh, there's a hidden one. There's always a hidden one. Naturally, the last one that's holding me is being a real pickle. So, I'm going to heat it up. See if that'll free it up. may not be able to see this, but I'll try and buzz that off of there. Still no. They got a breaker bar on it, so I think they call it a breaker bar for a reason. So it's, at this point, it's either break it or take it. And it's moving. There we go. This one was break it. I'll have to drill that and tap it out. 
Definitely suspected that that could happen. Frankly, I'm surprised that that bolt was even in there because this farmer left the bolts out of everything on the inside for these guards. Mm, nothing broken. More flax seed. And that's what she looks like without her skirts. That is very poor choice of wording. But flax seed looks like a mouse nest. Dirt and grease. Ted's getting this cleaned up really nice with the wire brush. Here's more evidence of uh, where they torched it. Right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see where it went through, and they. Which of course doesn't hurt anything. No, it'll be fine. Oh, that's going in fairly easy. It should. I guess it'll just stop when I get yeah, out. Yeah, you'll feel it quit. It, it, it was uh, recessed about maybe three sixteenths of an inch. You're getting close now. There you go. That's home. You're done. All right. New races. First new part going into D4. Just go till she stops. There you are. She's home. All right. Second new part in the D4. There she goes. Keep going, don't stop. How far we got to go? We're about home. That feels at his home. Yep, you're good. Okay, you ready? Yep, let her off. And bearing one is done. Hell yeah. Don't exactly have the right it's hammer. It's straight. Should get to a point where it stops. It's almost there. That's it, I believe. All right. Isn't it? Looks yeah. Good. Let's get this thing flipped over. Does it look pretty good everywhere? I think we're going to be good. All right. Okay, here goes bearing number two. That's it. Perfect. Now, I think we're good. All right, let's put our little uh, oil catch deal in. down, ain't it? Uh -oh, it? It don't turn. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, sir. You almost got me. Just putting a little bit of lube on there to keep those from spot rusting. All right. Successful day. I'm still waiting for these seals for here. They're ordered. Hopefully they'll be here next week. I got this new piece of steel here. Uh, it's 4340. It's a one inch round bar. And we are going to pull this worn out one from the main hand clutch, punch it out of there, and see if we can have that other one machined with a new keyway. So you can really, really see how much this one is worn out and egged out. And between this new stock and the new bushings, we can tighten this up quite a bit. Overall, a very productive day working on the D4. Uh, got the first new parts went into the D4, and uh, 
Well, more to come. So, but now we got a lot of cleaning to do. And we might have an exciting episode on the next one. Uh, we're going to try and get that cleaned out and somehow move the carcass of old Lefty to a place where we can power wash it. And we'll see how that goes. But thank you for watching. And please do like, share, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out and helps us grow. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.